This year for the high school system control technology event at TSA, we had the problem of our company specializing in security systems and crowd control, and we had been hired to develop a security system for Fun Slash Haunted House Company. This system needed to be designed to control the number of people in the haunted house at any given amount of time. The Fun House host could hold up to 10 people and only 10 people. People would go through the uh, haunted house in any size group, but only a maximum of 10 are allowed in at one time. Your system will need to sense when people have entered the fun house and close the entry door when the limit is reached. The exit door will need to be open, and the system will need to sense when people have exited the haunted house. Since the groups of people could go at their own pace, the doors will need to be open or closed depending on how many people are in the haunted house. The requirements was the solution had to fit in a two, fi two foot by two foot area. Entry door needed to be open if somebody, entry door needed to be open if the haunted house was empty or if it had room for more people. Exit door would need to be open if people were inside and closed if it was empty. People would come and go in different sized groups, so your system must control how many people are in the haunted house and the doors must work depending on how many people are inside. System must reset on its own without having to turn it off and back on. Lights must signal when doors are open or closed. And the only human interaction after turning on the solution is to trip the sensors somehow. Now let's look at what we had come up with on site. With this one, we had it to where the yellow tape signified the entrance. And when you turned it on, the entrance door would automatically turn open. And then each person would go in, and it would click the limit switch, counting up to ten, and it would close the entrance door. Then everyone would go through, and once the first person went in, the exit door would have went open. And as people left, it would click, hit and after the first person left, the, this door would open back up, invite, letting the next person or group to go in. And once all the people were out, this door would close, shut, signifying no one was in So the only time the rear door would, would close is when, if there were zero people inside. Yes. Gotcha. And so what was the, what was the conveyor system for? We had put it together because we thought there would be objects or something we would have on here as people. Physical objects? Yes, physical objects so what did, to move as when people. When did you find out that you did not have to actually do the physical objects moving, that it's more of a theoretical About scenario. right at the end, we so, um, realized there wasn't you, anything to put on to physically move it. Could you ask the event coordinator questions while it was going on? To clarify, I'm sure we could. We didn't. Yeah. Do it ourselves. Though. Okay. So one of the problems is you spent time making a conveyor system and doing the programming that was unnecessary. Yes. And you should have focused on just the doors and the limit switches. Yes. Okay. Now with our revised system, we had a limit switch for the entrance and a limit switch for the exit, and we would click the entrance limit switch, opening the exit door. And once we got to the maximum people, which was 10, the entrance door would shut. Since there could be opposite ones, the we would leave some, put more in, and then make all of them leave. And at the end, the exit door would shut. Now on to the program. What you see here are just comment blocks. And it's just telling you my overview of the problem. It does not affect the program in any way though but with the variables for this program we had a character type named limit one and we left the value blank for the sensor to input that value as one or zero telling us whether it would be open or closed and 
And then with the second one, it's the same type. Limit two. And we left it blank again for the same reason. And then the last one is a character type, and it's named people. This was our virtual counter for how many people were inside, and we set it at zero because at the beginning there was nobody inside. And it just counts the amount of people depending on whether which limit switch is pushed. Next in our program, I would like to go over the different while loops that we had in our program. And we had one huge while loop, that way the system never quit or stopped. And we had set it to one, that way it was just a continuous while loop and it never got out of that while loop. But inside that while loop, we had three other while loops, one for each condition. and. The first condition was when people equaled zero, so when our virtual counter equaled zero, it'd go through this while loop doing all the functions until that condition changed. Next one was when it wasn't zero, but it wasn't quite ten, so when it was either one through nine, it'd do this set of commands and would do that until that condition changed to either zero or ten. And then our last one was when the maximum amount of people were inside. So when our counter equaled 10, it'd go through this set of commands. And it would not, and whenever it got out of one while loop, it'd go around in the huge while loop until it found the one that it met. Next, I will be explaining on how the doors worked. And for this, I'd used servo modules, and that would be in, under the output hit folder for the commands, and it'll be servo module. And for this, I had it in two different mot motors, one and nine. When I had it at negative 110, the exit door would be open. And then when I had the entrance one at 20, he, the entrance door would be closed. This is for when the maximum people are inside. The other, one, other conditions had different sets. So for when it was in between, both doors were set at one, negative 110. So both doors would be open. So each and how servo motors work is that instead of how fast they go it goes to how far they go and for when nobody was inside I had it to where here the one in nine the exit door was closed and the entrance door was open because that was the requirement. Now the final part of our program that I want to go over is how the virtual counter worked and it worked by getting the information from the limit switches which went into digital inputs and it put them in for the limit one variables that way it would know whether the variable was zero or one being open or closed and so with this whenever this if statement was true so whenever the limit one variable equaled zero so when it was pushed in and someone was on the sensor it would add one person to the variable people adding one to our virtual counter and it would wait this wait until was so if you held the sensor so if one person was on the sensor here and just stayed there it would not continuously count up it would just count him until he passed through and the next person came on and this print to screen that you see at the bottom that is just so it will show the virtual counter on our screen and with the second condition where it was in between we could add people inside or take people out so when people entered or exited so the first one was limit one which was our entrance so whenever it got pushed in it'd add one person like in the previous condition and it'd wait until it was unpressed that way it didn't 
continuously count up. And our second one was limit two, which was our exit door. So when it was pushed in or set to zero, it would take one person away from the variable people. So whenever they exited, it'd count down, and it'd wait until they stepped off. That way it didn't just count everybody out while people were still inside. And then our print to screen is there again for the purpose of showing the variable counter. And in our last condition, we have limit two because it's at the maximum people. So we only want people to exit. So whenever it got pushed, we would want one person to be taken away from the variable people. And we would want it to wait until it was unpressed. That way it didn't count everybody out while people were still in again. Once again, we have the print to screen. We have it in all three while loops. That way it continuously showed the virtual counter in every single part. Something that I looked over at first was that there needed to be LEDs for whenever a sensor was hit. So like the left one would be for the entrance switch whenever it was pushed. Right one would be for the exit switch. And so you would click the entrance switch as many times as light would come on, exit switch as many times until you hit the either 0 or 10. Now with the code, you would just go to the outputs folder and you would get a digital output command function and I just put it in the if statement for whenever a limit switch got hit both for each limit but I use different digital ports which is represented by the first number here for each of the different limit switches so you would go into the if statement, it'd turn on, wait until when you let go, it'd turn off, go through the while loop again.